as we move now to national politics in the United States. Juan? Well, two veteran Democratic senators, Christopher Dodd of Connecticut and Byron Dorgan of North Dakota, announced this week that they would not seek re-election in November, increasing the chance Democrats would lose their supermajority in the Senate after the midterm elections. Chris Dodd made his announcement official on Wednesday. I love my job as your senator. I always have, still do. However, this past year has raised some challenges that insisted I take stock of my life. Over the past 12 months, I've managed four major pieces of legislation through the United States Congress, served as chair and acting chair of two major Senate committees, placing me at the center of the two most important issues of our time, health care and reform of financial services. I lost a beloved sister in July and in August, Ted Kennedy. I battled cancer over the summer and in the midst of all of this, found myself in the toughest political shape of my career. Many pollsters had predicted Christopher Dodd was likely to lose his seat in November against Republican frontrunner Rob Simmons. Hours after Dodd spoke, Connecticut's popular attorney general Richard Blumenthal, a Democrat, said he would run for Dodd's seat. Dodd's approval ratings have fallen following disclosures that he had received discounted loans from the subprime mortgage lender Countrywide and that he helped pave the way for employees of the bailed-out insurance giant AIG to receive $400 million in bonuses. While many consumer groups criticize Dodd's close ties to the banking and real estate industry, they're even more concerned about Tim Johnson, his likely successor as chair of the Senate Banking Committee. Uh, last year, Johnson was the only Democrat to oppose legislation tightening regulations of the credit card industry. Johnson is also the largest recipient in the Senate of campaign donations from payday lenders. We're going to turn right now to Ryan Grimm, who's been following these developments. And before we talk about the second surprising announcement by Aaron Dorgan, on the issue of Christopher Dodd, uh, Ryan Grimm, talk about the significance of uh, the Connecticut senator saying he won't run again. What do you think is happening here? So this, this is really terrific news for Wall Street. Intuitively, you might think that because Christopher Dodd is retiring, that kind of frees him to follow his, you know, best, most progressive instincts, and he'll be tough on Wall Street, and he'll and he'll really craft the reform, uh, that, an aggressive reform that he's been working on over the last year and a half or so. But in fact, it's kind of the opposite. Chris, Chris Dodd is an example of democracy actually working. The lower he went in the polls, the more populist he had to be, the more uh, aggressive he had to be against the banks and against Wall Street. And so there was real hope that in order to save his own skin, that he was going to pass some, some, some really strong financial regulatory reform. With him retiring, uh, he no longer has that incentive. In fact, his most likely employers are going to be the people that he's, uh, that he's working to regulate at this point. And there's also uh, a, Senate, a Senate dynamic that you need to think about. A chairman is powerful because of the, the, the threats and the punishment that he can dole out or the promises that he can make in the future. If he's not going to be around in 2011, then people aren't going to be as afraid of him, and they're not going to want anything from him, because he won't be there to deliver it. So that makes him, uh, you know, a much weaker chairman uh, shepherding this legislation through. And the significance of Tim Johnson, his likely successor to be chair of the Senate Banking Committee? Sure, that's that's another gift to Wall Street. Uh, Tim Tim Johnson, uh, you know, as as you guys pointed out earlier, was the only one that voted against credit card reform. I mean, think about that. This is a Democrat voting against credit card reform. He's from South Dakota, which is you know, there's there's this thing called the South Dakota loophole. South Dakota is a a, a, uh, a state that that is one of those couple of states, South Dakota, Delaware, that attracts financial firms by telling them that they basically don't have to follow any laws. All they have to do is set up shop in their state and employ a couple of people in their state, and they'll let them just run wild. So the the only hope that that's out there, if Tim Johnson becomes chairman, is people hope that he kind of gets religion and and says, well, I was a South Dakota uh, Democrat, so, of course, I had to vote with the credit card companies, and I had to vote with the banks, I had to vote with the payday lenders and all these folks. But now that he's chairman, he, you know, he'll, he'll kind of, uh, you know, change his tune a little bit. That, that's a really f uh, flimsy read to, to try to hang on to. The other possibility is that Jack 
Jack Reed, a uh, progressive from Rhode Island, could, could leapfrog him and get the chairmanship. So there's going to be some jockeying in the beginning of, uh, of the next uh, Congress over that chairmanship, and there's going to be a real push from consumer advocates and liberals to get, to get Jack Reed uh, to take that gavel, rather than Tim Johnson. Ryan Grimm, we're going to ask you to stay with us, but we have to break right now. Ryan Grimm is senior congressional correspondent for The Huffington Post. We're talking about Christopher Dodd, Tim Johnson, uh, possibly replacing him, or is it Jack Reed? And we're going to talk about Byron Dorgan, the significance of his announcement that he will not seek re-election. Stay with us. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Our guest is Ryan Grimm, senior correspondent for The Huffington Post, Juan. Ryan, I wanted to ask you, is there another possible scenario on this thing with Dodd's resignation, that now that he is basically not going to run for re-election, uh, that uh, he is free, basically, uh, in crafting banking legislation? He won't have to worry as much about the, the, the power and the influence of the banking industry? You know, I mean, that, that's what you would think, and, that, and that's certainly what you'd hope. And the, the New York Times this morning editorial board is calling for him, saying, you know, now that you're free, you know, uh, you know, go left, young man. But uh, you know, it, it's it's probably not going to work out like that because. The, the freedom that he now has is to do whatever he wants and whatever is, you know, in his own best interest. And in it, what's in his own best interest is probably to, to work with the companies that are going to put him on their boards and make them their advisors. And when the two-year uh, when the two-year ban is up, you know, then he can start uh, lobbying Congress as well. As long as he was worried about re-election. He had to move left. He had he had to work with consumer advocates. He had to work with progressives, and he had to be tough on Wall Street in order to get Connecticut voters to send him back to Washington. What he's also freed from, not just the banks, is from Connecticut voters. And so, you know, it, it's it's definitely possible that his that his inner lefty angel will come out and he'll he'll become a Wall Street warrior. It's also po it's also possible, and I think more likely that he won't. But but time will tell, and, and this is something that we'll be watching really closely. Well,